Good day, my schoolers. You're welcome to my school channel, and my name is Abiola. Remember, in this channel, you'll be joining me to solve the jams and bits past question for the subject chemistry, the year 2012. Do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we'll be right back. Welcome back to my school channel and in this video segment we are solving questions 1 to 15. So join me as we start with question 1. Which of the following methods can be used to obtain pure water from a mixture of sand, water and methanoic acid? So we have to use filtration, okay? Use it to separate insoluble particles from liquids. And we know that sand is not soluble in water. So once the sand is taken away, we have a mixture of water and methanoic acid and we can separate these two because they are miscible all right we can separate these two by distillation though i don't um, really give in to simple distillation okay other methods of um, or other forms of distillation can be used okay but based on the options provided we'll go with filtration at first then followed by distillation so option d is the correct option question two how many atoms are present in 6.0 gram of magnesium? Okay, so typically we know that magnesium should be 24, okay, 24 grams. But here we are looking at 6, and that is four places that magnesium has been divided into. Or you can say 24 divided by 6, that is 4. So it has been split into 4, just to put, okay. So um, we, we have the, the Avogadro's number here as um, 6.02 times 3 to the power 23. So if 6 of these means um, this has been split into four. That means we are definitely going to divide this by four. Okay, so um, let's just take away the decimal points. You know, 60 divided by four should give you 15. All right, so that means if we are putting back the decimal points, we are looking at 1.5 something. So if I look through the options provided, the option C is the correct option. You can also say that um, um, MG of 24 equals to this. Therefore, six gram of this equals to X. Then you cross multiply, you get your answer. So option C, 1.51 times 10 to the power 23 is the correct option. 3. 50 cm cube of gas was collected over water at 10 centigrade, 10 um, Celsius rather, and 6, 765 millimeter mercury. Okay, calculate the volume of the gas at standard temperature pressure. If the saturated vapor pressure of water at that temperature, okay, is 5 millimeter mercury so you just have to take away this this is for the gas and this is for the water that is being used okay so that is 765 minus this five here that means 760 millimeter mercury for the gas so we are going to use the general gas equation okay which we have as p1 v1 okay over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 or rather over t2 pardon my errors twice okay so we are looking for v2 from the question we are told down um, if the saturated vapor pressure of water at 10 degrees celsius is 5 millimeter mercury we have to calculate the volume of the gas at stp so we are looking at v2 all right so if i'm making v2 the subject of the formula what we should have is v2 okay equals p1 v1 t2 over p2 t1 Okay, so we can now fill in the information or the data. We have um, P1 at 760. Remind, remember, 765 minus 5 of what I represented there. Then we have the V1 times 50. All right. We have T2, you know, at STP. Volume of the gas at STP. That makes 273. Of course, in Kelvin scale. All right. Then we have um, P2. Okay, well, remember at STP, that's of course 760 as well, times T1, the temperature, you know, it's given as 10 degrees Celsius. If we are moving to Kelvin scale, that will be 10 plus 273, that makes 283. Okay, so by the time we we'll divide this, if we multiply this and we divide it by this, what we should have is um, 48 point. 
um, 23, 32, and there about. So we should have around this. Remember, we are working with volume, so that is centimeter cube. So I can say 48.23. Let's go back to the screen and see if we can find somewhat around this um, value we just um, deducted from there. So we can find that in option D. Option D is the correct option. Question four. An increase in the pressure exerted on a gas at a constant temperature results in what? Okay, this is definitely Boyce's law. Okay, it states that um, the volume of a given mass of gas is inversely proportional to pressure, provided that temperature remains constant. So we have constant temperature and there's an increase in pressure. So from Boyce's law, we can see that the relationship between pressure and volume, they are inversely, okay, they are inverse to one another. Okay, so that means as pressure increases, volume decreases, okay? So that makes that um, option B is the correct option because an increase in the pressure exerted on the gas at a constant temperature results in a decrease in volume using Boyce's law. So option B is the correct option. Don't forget to click on the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the MySchool website. There you can download the MySchool mobile app for your Android devices or get the MySchool software for your laptops. And don't forget that at the bottom of the MySchool page, of course, we have different packages for agent sales. Okay, so get the best from MySchool. Join me as we solve question number five. In the reaction above, what volume of hydrogen would be left over when 300 cm cube of oxygen and 1000 cm cube of hydrogen are exploded in a sealed tube. So if we use the reaction we have above, we can see two moles of hydrogen gas react with one mole of oxygen gas. So that means we are told from the question that we use 300 of oxygen. So that means one of oxygen will require two of hydrogen. That means five of oxygen will require 10 of hydrogen there we now have 300 of oxygen we require 600 of hydrogen so we've used 600 of hydrogen to react with 300 of oxygen out of the total of 1000 provided so if we take away the 600 used from the 1000 supplied what we have left is 400 cm cube so let's go back to the question what volume of hydrogen will be left when this explosion has taken place in a CO2? Of course, we'll be left with 400 cm cube. So option B is the correct option. Do not forget to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification so you can get alerts as soon as we upload the next video segment just for you. Question 6. Evaporation sublimation, diffusion, Brownian motion, okay? Which of the above can correctly be listed as evidences for the particulate nature of matter? Okay, to be very direct, we have diffusion and Brownian motion, okay? That has been um, properly or as priority, okay? The as priorities, they are being introduced as the, uh, the evidence for the particulate nature of matter. But as well, we can consider evaporation and sublimation because um, those are some of the physical changes, all right, that matter undergo, okay? So, I, based on the options, if we had um, an option that was provided with just um, three and four, that would have been the most correct option to go for, okay? But since we have um, a presentation, a combination whereby three and four is made available in option D. So we can go for option D because evaporation, sublimation, of course there are physical changes that matter undergo, okay? But if we want to really go very direct and strictly to what we have presented in our textbooks, we would have gone for diffusion and brand motion alone. So we'll go for option D. So option D is the most viable option we have here. Number seven. If the element X and Y have atomic numbers 11 and 17 respectively, okay, so what type of bond can they form? All right, so what element has atomic number 11? So let's count hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, neon, sodium. Element 11 is sodium, okay? So, let's go to element 17, okay? Sodium, magnesium, aluminium, silicon, phosphorus, sulfur, 
chlorine okay so that means you are looking at sodium and chlorine okay sodium chloride your common salt so definitely sodium is a metal chlorine is a non-metal all right so metal donates non-metal at least for what we are looking at here um is the receiver okay so we can see that what will happen here is a unique kind of bond all right because there's a donor and there is a receiver someone is um, giving us electron and someone else is receiving so i can just put it simply as um, a unique kind of bonding or electrovalent bond okay so what type of bond can they form option c a unique bond question eight a hydrogen atom has lost an electron so this atom that has lost an electron contains what okay so when you talk about an hydrogen atom we know um, it has the atomic number of one okay and proton number determines atomic number and for hydrogen the atomic mass is one okay so that tells you that neutron is absent except you want to consider the other isotopes of hydrogen deuterium tritium and what have you so um coming back to the question a hydrogen atom which has lost an electron so it has lost an electron what it has left is just the proton inside the nucleus and no neutron so the correct option will be option a one proton only question nine the electronic configuration of magnesium ion is what so we can see that it has lost two electrons the normal configuration electronic configuration of magnesium atom would have been um 12 okay i'm talking about something number 12 okay so but here we are told that it has lost two electrons so instead of we having 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 okay uh, that should be yes 3s2 okay 2 2 6 that is 10 then 3s2 so but here we are told that um it has lost two electrons okay the electrons in the atomic shell so that means that the electronic configuration of a magnesium ion that has lost two electrons will just be 1s2, 2s2, and 2p6. The 3s2 electron has been lost. So the op correct option is option B, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Don't forget to use the link in the description below. It's going to take you to the my school website where you can ask your questions right now. And our solution providers will be waiting to help you out. So join me as we solve question 10. Group 7 elements are what? So what are their characteristics or what characteristic of group 7 elements can we find to be correct in the options provided? So let's look at option A, monoatomic. That's incorrect. Group 7 elements are diatomic. Okay. Um, B, they are good oxidizing agent. That is very correct. Group 7 elements are good oxidizing agent. You're talking about chlorine, fluorine, talking about halogens. Okay, C, they are highly electropositive. This is incorrect as well. They are strongly electronegative. Okay, group seven elements, D, they are electron donors. No, they, no, they are good electron acceptors. Okay, for instance, when you look at um, sodium chloride, all right, sodium donates the one electron that the chlorine accepts to become negatively charged and to obey the octet rule. Okay, so uh, we can confirm that they are diatomic, they are good oxidizing agents, they are strongly electronegative, they are electron acceptors. So the correct option here is option B, that group 7 elements are good oxidizing agents. We believe that you may have better steps or explanations in solving any of the questions we've solved so far. Please would like to know. All you need to do is to use that comment section below, indicate the question number and the explanations or the reasonings you'd like to share. Question 11. Which of the following is used to study the arrangement of particles in crystal lattices? Okay, that is of course the X-ray. All right, when you look at um, gamma rays, intense gamma, ray, gamma, intense gamma radiation, okay, can be used to destroy cancerous cells, okay, or cancerous growth. All right, so um, beta particles and gamma rays, okay, you can also use them to um, control or monitor the thickness of sheet materials, maybe like paper, like um, plastic, like metals during their production. So the correct option here is option D for X rays. Question 12. Which of the above shows that air is a mixture? 
Okay, so um, let's look at statement one. It has a varied composition from one place to another. That is, of course, correct. Okay, so two, statement two, its constituents can be separated by physical method or physical means. That is, of course, correct because air is a mixture and you remember properties of mixture. Okay, and three, statement three, it contains unreactive noble gases or rare gases. Um, these, are, these exist as a monoatomic molecules, okay, in air. All right, and um, we can also say something about um, noble gases. Of course, they roughly about 1% when it comes to composition of air. So we can confirm or say confidently that statement one, statement two, and three, they are all correct. So which of the above shows that air is a mixture? Okay, statement one, two, three show that air is a mixture. So option D is the correct option. Question 13. The chemicals used to soften hard water involves the addition of what? Okay, so when you talk about hard water, we have the temporary hard water and the permanent. All right, so the temporary can be removed by just boiling. So when you talk about the permanent hard water, this is due to the presence of um, calcium and magnesium ion. So how do we remove this calcium and magnesium ion? You use all soluble sodium compounds, okay, which we form, not from, which we form insoluble precipitates of calcium and magnesium ion. So you can be looking at um, zeo, um, looking at um, zeolite, you can be looking at um, washing soda, caustic soda, and what have you. So the correct option here is option C. You are using all soluble sodium compounds which form insoluble PPT precipitates of calcium and magnesium ion. So option C is the correct option. 14. Chlorination of water for town supply is carried out to do what? Okay, so um, once you've done coagulation, once you've done sedimentation, you've filtered water, now it's now time to kill germs. And what do we introduce? We introduce chlorine. Of course, you use this as well in swimming pools. So the correct option here is option B, to remove germs or to kill germs from the water. So option B is the correct option. Question 15. The solubilities of different solutes, okay, in a given solvent can be compared by what? How do you make that comparison? We do that by plotting their solubility curves or several curves on the same axis, plural. Okay, so you are using the same axis and you are plotting their curves on it. So the correct option is option B, by plotting their solubility curves on the same axis. We've come to the end of this video segment, but there are more interesting segments to come. All you need to do is to hit that like button. Also, click on the subscribe button and always tap on bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video segment just for you.